I'm not ashamed. Does God hear sinners? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of John on walking through the Bible. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to John chapter 9. We're going to be reading from verses 24 to 34. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So John chapter 9, beginning verse 24. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know that though I was blind, now I see. Then they said to him again, what, do he, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I told you already and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him and said, You are his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. We know that God spoke to Moses. As for this fellow, we do not know where he is from. The man answered and said to them, Why, this is a marvelous thing that you do not know where he is from, yet he has opened my eyes. Now we know that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, he hears him. Since the world began, it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who is born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered and said to him, You were completely born in sins, and are you teaching us? And they cast him out. In this chapter, we've been dealing with a man who was healed by Jesus of his blindness, which he had from birth. Because Jesus did this on the Sabbath and nobody could find Jesus, the leaders of the Jews brought this man before them to find out what happened. They didn't believe his story, so they called his parents in order to discredit the miracle by getting them to admit the man wasn't born blind. The parents said that he was, but because they feared being cast out of the synagogue for confessing Jesus, said that since their son was an adult, any more inquiries about this needed to be presented to him. Which brings us to verse 24. When they brought the former blind man back before them, they wanted the man to give God the glory and not Jesus, since they knew that Jesus was a sinner. Of course, the blind man should give God the glory for only the power of God could perform such miracles. But Jesus performed such miracles, so what should that say about him? The blind man said that he didn't know whether or not Jesus was a sinner, but what he did know was that he could now see. Again, the Jews asked him how he received his sight. The blind man was obviously frustrated by now because he said that he had already told them, yet they didn't believe. Why then should he tell them again? His only conclusion was that they wanted to become Jesus' disciples. The Jews reviled him for this saying, saying that the blind man was in fact one of Jesus' disciples, but as for them, they were Moses' disciples. They claimed to know that God spoke to Moses, despite never seeing him, for Moses had been dead for over 1,400 years by that point, and yet they did not know where Jesus was from, despite having seen him and the miracles he performed. Even the former blind man saw the irony in that statement and said that it was amazing that they didn't know where Jesus was from, yet here was this former blind man with eyesight restored. How blind they must be not to know where Jesus was from. He goes on to say in verse 31 that God does not hear sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God, he hears him. Now I'd like to unpack this statement for a moment. Who is being defined as a sinner here and what is meant by that term? The reason why I ask is because the Lord willing later on in our studies of the writings of Paul, we're going to find that everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So by definition, everyone is a sinner. So if God doesn't hear the sinner, then he doesn't hear anyone. Well, that can't possibly be what the former blind man means here in John 9. The actual answer is found in what he says after that, which is that true worshipers and those who do God's will, God hears. So what the blind man is saying is that when man is in rebellion and refuses to turn to God, God will not hear them. We will see this during the life of King Saul, the Lord willing, when we study for Samuel. However, when someone repents of their sins and seeks to turn to God, God will hear this person. This is true even for a person who has not yet become a Christian, as we will see the Lord willing with Cornelius in our study of Acts. 
It is true that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but if we will repent of our sins and obey God's will, God will hear us and forgive our sins. But if we seek to remain in our sins, God won't hear us. The former blind man's conclusion concerning Jesus was that, that since it had been unheard of that any person born blind had been healed, that Jesus must be from God and therefore been pleasing to God, or else Jesus could not do nothing. The Jews rejected this man's argument, coming back to him with the accusation that this man was born in sins and being born blind, and now he had the audacity to teach them, people of God, that they believe that this man was born in sins is similar to what the disciples believed earlier on in the chapter, a false notion for children are not born in sins. The consequences of this blind man's words, though, was that he was cast out of the synagogue, excommunicated for that was the penalty imposed by the Jewish leaders for anyone who followed Jesus. We'll get Jesus' response to this, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of John chapter 9, verses 35 to 41, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.